welcome to Down From The Attic. I am Luke, and each week I come up in the attic, look around and try and find something interesting and cool to show you. This week, we're looking at again, I think everyone's played at some point, either owning it as a kid or playing it with friends. Shiver me timbers, hoist the mainsail and batten down the hatches, it's Pop Up Pirate. The box art is fun and friendly, but let's not forget this is aimed at children. A jolly pirate and his parrot smiling out from the box. It's a barrel load of family fun. Slide sword into the slots, but beware, if the pirate pops out, you're out! The pirate is smiling and pretty relaxed for a guy who, oh, I don't know, has a sword in his back? There's a sinister edge to this game you pick up on as an adult. Unlike many board games where the rules and instructions are printed on the box lid or on an instruction manual, this game has the instructions printed right on the back of the box. Pop-Up Pirate is a barrel of fun for everyone. First, gently but firmly push the pirate down until he locks down in position. Then, select your favourite coloured swords and take it in turns to slide them into the slots in the barrel. But beware! Slide into the wrong slot and out pops the pirate. And that means you're out! But which slot is the wrong slot? You won't know because it's a different slot every game. That's right, it's completely random. This is Russian Roulette for Kids. Only with a 24 chambered gun uh, barrel that's activated with swords. Yeah, it's not the best analogy. The game pieces are charming. There's really no other way of describing them. The pirate in particular is simply adorable. A big round head and a tiny body. I always liked the way this figure looked. The only stickers to him are the eye and the body. His bandana, beard, eye patch are all moulded pieces and fixed in place, which I'm thankful for. It really helped keep in good looking condition over the years. He's surprisingly lightweight, which helps with him popping up, and trust me, he can pop up quite high. The barrel is nicely weighted and feels solid, and even after all these years, the spring mechanism works flawlessly every time. A real testament to fantastic game design. The swords are solid, they don't feel cheap in the least bit, obviously rounded off for safety reasons. The base does a good job of fleshing out the whole desert island pirate motif. There's a giant squid and the friendly shark in the sea, and the stickers underneath the barrel display a desert island, complete with beach with driftwood, palm trees, treasure, a giant angry vulture, and... Hmm... Yeah, uh, I seriously doubt that this indigenous fellow here would pass the PC correctness criteria these days. Still, the graphics exude a happy and light air for the game, but this game is anything but. You know what's going to happen. Everybody playing knows. But when? Now that's the real question. This game gets tenser and tenser as each sword blade is slotted in place. Ideally, you want to play this game with four people. One for each colour, but playing with two? Two colours each. Three players? Pick a colour each and then share out the remaining colours. More than four? choose swords at random. It doesn't matter since you take it in turn to put the swords in place, everyone at the table will know who popped the pirate. Look at this thing now, it's like a porcupine! Knowing that one of the remaining slots was going to set him off was almost unbearable as a kid, knowing that your choice dooms you, or dooms your friends. Getting to this stage and putting the sword in and nothing happening, it made you feel like a bomb disposal expert snipping the right wire. You jerk back, as if the seat you are sat in is an electric chair. You lost. You pop the pirate. You lost. And everyone breathes a sigh of relief. And laughs at your mistake. With the selected slot being triggered to set the pirate off popping, you think you'd feel some slight resistance putting the sword in. Not at all. Until you click the sword fully in, you have absolutely no idea of whether you're safe or doomed. I'd love to see how this game works. But I'm conscious that undoing the screws would cause some springs to uncoil and it would never work again. That's another impressive thing with this game. No batteries. It's all done with springs and cogs. Clever stuff. It genuinely impresses me how inventive toys of the 80s and 90s were. I have to feel for this little guy though. Think of things from his perspective. There's no pirate ship depicted anywhere on the box or on the island, so we can only assume that his ship sank and thanks to his life belt, he washed up on the island. After braving it past giant squids and sharks to wash up on this bleak desert island. The locals are hostile. They smile, but are quick to draw their spears. The wildlife cruel and enormous. 
To make matters worse, the whole island is surrounded and guarded by giants, massive monsters intent on skewing the poor pirates on their swords. He runs to hide in the only bit of shelter he can find, an old barrel from the ship. But it doesn't deter them. One by one, their swords burst through the side, the blades narrowly missing the petrified pirate. It is only a matter of time before one of them hits him. And it does. He doesn't think, he just reacts. He leaps in intense pain, his body aflame as the cold steel sears into him. I'm, I'm getting way too sidetracked here. Maybe he just got pricked in the bottom and jumped out the barrel. I've played this game with people who've never even heard of it. I've seen the tension and intrepidation on their faces as they place sword after sword in, not knowing what will happen. It's immeasurably satisfying. I compare this game to the likes of Crocodile Dentist and Jenga in that there really is only one loser and multiple winners. Thankfully this game's still being made, and still being made by Tommy. There's a number of different variants in the market as well. There's a Pirates of the Caribbean one where instead of the normal pirate, it's Captain Jack Sparrow. There's also a Star Wars variant with Darth Vader in the middle and you plot lightsabers into the barrel. Quite why Darth Vader would be sat in a barrel, I don't know, but it's out there. I highly recommend picking up a copy of this, either for your kids or to relive some childhood memories. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.